What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. I'm going to continue my conversation with you concerning the complete history of boxing. June 22nd, 1938, on this day, was, in my opinion, the greatest fight in boxing history for what it meant. In my opinion, Joe Lewis that evening, became the greatest heavyweight champion of all times. Let's look at the story of Joe Lewis and its full contents. I'm going to show you a book that was produced. There were many books that were produced on this fight, or on Joe Lewis in general. But I want to show you a statement that was made. That concurs with my statement to you. Now I pulled out two books of many books that I have. Involving this very subject. Here you have Joe Lewis versus Max Melling. Fight of the Century. A definitive book on the subject of one of boxing's greatest rivalries. The Ring. And this book is by Patrick Myler. It was forwarded by Bert Randolph Sugar. This is a very good read. But I'm going to show you another book. This one is Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber by Bill Libby. In this book, I want to show you a statement that was made. On the second fight between Max Melling and Joe Lewis. Now, this is chapter 10, Smelling 2, the second Joe Lewis Max Smelling boxing match was more than a heavyweight title fight, more even than a chance for the greatest fighter of the decade to avenge the only loss of his record. It was, in its way, the warning of war, the United States of America against Nazi Germany. Now, let me just say one thing before we get into this. Benito Mussolini was a dictator in Italy. Joe Lewis, in my opinion, was probably the fighter, the heavyweight champion of the world. And at this time, he wasn't champion when he faced Primo Carnera. But he was put into a position where he had to show the dominant country as a black man. Because Mussolini was a dictator of Italy. And he was, well, I should say Primo Cornell was brought over from Italy, from the mob. And Joe Lewis had to defeat Primo Cornell, not just for his place in boxing history, not only for him to be able to get a title shot, but because of that very reason that Mussolini was a dictator of Italy and they didn't like black people. They didn't like, there was a lot of things they didn't like and they felt they were the dominant race. And Joe Lewis had to defeat Primo Carnera and he did in six rounds. He knocked him out, broke his ankle, because of the weight of the fall. So that was chapter one of Joe Lewis. I wouldn't say used as a pawn at that point, but in retrospect, it was Joe Lewis. And we'll get to 1936 with Jesse Owens. Because Jesse Owens was the man that America looked for. Although he got no fair treatment, came from Ohio State to win gold medals in Germany. And that he did. He was celebrated for it. But Jesse Owens became important before the race in 1936 when Joe Lewis was stopped by Max Schmeling 
M36 in Yankee Stadium, June 19th of 1936. Jesse Owens had to clean up the mess that Joe Lewis left behind. Because Max Melling was from Germany, the Olympic Games was going to be held later that summer in Berlin. And Hitler had one up on America. Jesse Owens was counted on to clean up the mess that Joe Lewis left behind of who was, quote unquote, the superior country. And when it comes to Joe Lewis, it became the superior race. And that's why the 1938 fight was so important because it meant so much to so many people. Because Germany had concentration camps for the Jews. And this affected everyone. So Joe Lewis was put in a position where he had to demonstrate who he was as a person. Although he was considered one-fifth of a human being and who he was as a patriot to the country in which he lived. On the other hand, Max Melling had one foot in and one foot out. He was heavyweight champion in 1930. He lost his title in 1932 to Jack Sharkey. He won that title in 1930 from Jack Sharkey and lost it to Jack Sharkey. Now, why I say he had one foot in and one foot out is because at this point of his life, Max Melling was well known in Germany, but he became famous when he knocked out Joe Lewis. And this became a problem for this country, United States, because of what was happening in Germany. Now, to add some contents, the president of the United States at that time was FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Came in office in 1933 as president. The dictator in Germany at that time was Adolf Hitler. He took office in 1933. Became the Fuhrer one year later in 1934. Why all of this is important? Because Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Adolf Hitler had history. Franklin Delano Roosevelt took education in Germany at the age of eight. He knew who Max Smelling was. He worshipped Max Smelling because of what happened with Max Smelling and Jack Sharkey. Max Smelling at that point was the heavyweight champion of the world. He lost it in 32, one year before Roosevelt took office. But Roosevelt grew up under that. So he respected Max Smelling. He supported Max Smelling. He worshipped Max Smelling. So Joe Lewis would begin to rise in the rankings. He would knock out Max Bear in four rounds in New York's Yankee Stadium. He knocked out Jack Sharkey after he was knocked out by Max Smelling in 1936. Then he would knock out Jimmy Braddock in 37 and become the second black heavyweight champion in boxing history. This is important. You need to understand this. Now, when you look at all the other heavyweight champions, or the black heavyweight champions, none of them had to deal with what Joe Lewis had to deal with. None of them had to worry about 
Now, outside of Jack Johnson, but Jack Johnson's situation was quite different than Joe Lewis's situation. Why? Because Joe Lewis had to suffer the consequences of the behavior of Jack Johnson. Although Jack Johnson behaved as he should have been allowed to behave. He shouldn't have to do anything extra as a person or as a champion. But because of the way he was treated, because of the racism that he came up under, is why that sticks out. But Joe Lewis was put in a very special category because he had to clean up what was despised by the urban America and the suburban America, mainstream America. He had to prove himself. So there's certain things he couldn't do. He wasn't allowed to do. And that put a lot of stress on Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis still had a lot of haters. But when it came to fighting for democracy, at that point, Joe Lewis was loved. Democracy that he couldn't share in the country that he represented. You see, no other black heavyweight champion to this day had to deal with that. Not even Muhammad Ali, because when Muhammad Ali came around, the civil rights movement backed him up. Joe Lewis was able to fight with his hands, Ali with his mouth. Ali couldn't do that in Joe Lewis's time. But the stage was set for Ali. To speak righteously on the unjust in this country. Ali came around at the right time. Ali's personality would not have allowed him to exist in the way Joe Lewis existed when Joe Lewis came around. And so Ali came around at the right time. So then Joe Lewis would meet with Max Smelling, June 19th, 1936. But Joe Lewis took life for granted, as many young athletes do. And he met with a more experienced fighter in Max Smelling. He found out about it that evening behind 72 right hands and 12 rounds later. That's why the 38 fight became important because of the fight that happened in 1936. That's why Joe Lewis got a shot at the title because of the fight that happened in 36 and the circumstance that was in front of him in 1938, 39, 40. And so Joe Lewis began to understand the importance of his presence because we're all passing stars in a cloud. We're passing stars in the universe. We're here for a specific reason. Nothing more, nothing less. And he found his purpose. And so he began to train. Because after he defeated Braddock in 37, he did not feel like a champion. Because a champion is not a man with a belt around his waist. A champion is your legacy. A champion is your last name. A champion is what you represent. And Joe Lewis didn't re represent himself as a champion in 1936. So he couldn't possibly represent the United States as a champion in 1937. 
And it wasn't because he lost to Max Smelling himself. It's because he didn't perform as a champion that evening. So until he defeated the man who defeated him, in spite of his name, his origin, where he came from, he couldn't consider himself a champion. So that's why that fight in 38 was made. So in 1938, June 22nd to be exact, Joe Lewis knew that he had to perform in a way that would let everyone know what a champion looks like and the results of what a champion does. You have to understand, in Joe Lewis's time, what the black community went through with Jim Crow, Percy versus Ferguson. They needed someone to show an example to the masses that they was just as equal if given the proper opportunity. Joe Lewis was that opportunity for the black community. He felt he let them down in 1936. He didn't understand the importance of his position until he began to see the disappointment within his community of him. His mother laid down a set of values for him once she found out what was important to him of lacing on gloves as opposed to playing a violin. She sat him down on the porch and said, whatever you do, give it all your thought and your heart. Don't let your community and don't let your people down. He understood what that meant. And he disobeyed the laws of his mother. During Joe Lewis's time and coming up to the 1970s, possibly 1980s, when a young man was spoken to by his mother, Those words meant everything. When a young man's father set examples for him, that meant everything. So when Joe Lewis climbed into the ring that evening, 1938, he carried the blessings and the disappointment of his mother, his community, his people, and his country. There's no way in hell when a man carries all that burden in a ring with him and he's focused that you're going to beat him. And that's what happened on the evening of June 22nd, 1938. You see, once that is bottled up into a man's heart, it's directed by his mind, but it's in his heart. You are no longer fighting that man. You're now fighting his purpose. And once you have to deal with a man's purpose, and he's a five-star general, leadership, principle, work ethics, and self-esteem tied up by spirituality, you would never defeat that man. Doesn't matter what man you look around, you listen to on the radio, YouTube, that man will never beat you because you have to find your purpose. And once you define your specific purpose, and that purpose is divine, 
There's nothing that's going to get into your way. That's why you must define your purpose. Joe Lewis defined it that evening. He understood exactly what his purpose was. Between those ropes, June 22nd, 1938. Now, back to FDR and Adolf Hitler. What was their purpose? They both took office in 1933 and they both died in 1945. You tell me what was their purpose? And Joe Lewis, Max Melling, realized, understood. They accepted their purpose. And that devoured their friendship until the very end. I met Max Smelling, I never met Joe Lewis. I've seen Joe Lewis at least 45 times, but I never got close enough to him because he always had people around him. But as I sit down and listen to the stories in my mind's eye about what was said to me from my grandfather, from my father and all the old timers who I came in contact with. They all show their blessings to Joe Lewis because the time in which this man came, what he had to endure, the pressure that was on Joe Lewis, so much so that Joe Lewis was called down to the White House because he was in the area. And FDR found out that Joe Lewis was in the area. He requested that he appear in the White House, front lawn. He wasn't allowed in the White House. He was in the front lawn. And according to stories, Joe Lewis himself, he stated that FDR felt his muscles and stated that we need those muscles for democracy. Now, here's the thing. World War II was pretty much on the rise after 1938. Joe Lewis stated when he was waiting in line to speak with Roosevelt, the Japanese were ahead of him. And once Roosevelt found out Joe Lewis had arrived, he held up the Japanese. They were on their way walking into the White House and had Joe Lewis come in first. And that's when he told Joe Lewis, we need these muscles for democracy. Joe Lewis would later on state in his memoir that it's very possible something was happening then. Now again, that fight was June 22nd, 1938. When the Japanese invaded China, Roosevelt gave strong financial support to China. Japanese didn't like that. Pearl Harbor was bombed December 7th, 1941. In the midst of that, Germany was a dictating country. They didn't like the Jews. They didn't like the black community. They felt they was a, they was a superior race. So FDR called into the State Athletic Commission 
and told them, whoever the referee is, he better not stop that damn fight. Because FDR didn't even want the fight to happen. Because he was afraid of a war. They were on a cusp of one. And he didn't want to take that chance. Because Max Melling was from Germany. And Adolf Hitler called Max Melling into his chambers many times. FDR had a relationship with Max Melling behind the scenes. They knew each other. So a lot was happening behind the scenes. And so Joe Lewis paid 10% to Jimmy Braddock to step aside because he was next in line to give Max Melling a shot at his title. And they could not take a chance of Jimmy Braddock taking bribes from Germany or losing because once the title went to Germany they would never give the United States a shot so Joe Lewis came around at the perfect time for him to get that shot Joe Gould who was the manager of Jimmy Braddock was getting the fight with Smelly. All of Joe Gould's requests were met except for the final request. He wanted all the Jewish community members to be released from the concentration camps and that was not going to happen. So Joe Gould sat back with his cigar and waited for authors. Offers from Jack Sharkey. And Joe Lewis's offer was the highest bid. 10% of his purse for the next 10 years would turn out to be his entire career. So on that evening, from the weigh-in earlier that morning to the night of the fight. They tried to boycott the fight because many did not believe that Joe Lewis was going to defeat Max Smelling because of the results in 1936. Then there were those who were prejudiced enough that even if Joe Lewis defeated Max Melling, they didn't want a black man to gain the glory. You see, this is the pressure Joe Lewis was under. Do you know Joe Lewis had death threats? Yes. All this was happening the evening of that fight. His mother had to be protected. All the families in the black community were surrounded by radio. The members of Jewish community were surrounded by radio because this was just as important to them as it was in the black community. You see, Joe Lewis had so much to prove. But because he went in there with a specific purpose, it's why he got the job done. If it wasn't for this country. It was for him because he was the one that carried a burden for two years. And a man of his honor, integrity, and respect for who he was. He demanded that fight, got it and showed why he was the greatest heavyweight champion in boxing history. 
Now, I have hundreds of articles of Joe Louis Maximo. You know that. I, I don't even have to continue to explain that to you. But this is one of the books of Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling, and it has articles in there that explain the fight in detail. And I just want to show you what the headlines look like. Lewis wins on KO in first. Champion batters Max Schmeling to floor three times. Lewis scores quickest KO in title contest. All these accomplishments came from the evening of Joe Lewis knocking out Max Schmeling. That was all build up on what Joe Lewis has suffered. No question in my mind that Joe Lewis is the greatest heavyweight champion in boxing history because of the reason he was in that ring in 1938. The punishment that he would give Max Schmeling. To this day. Incredible. Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. All great fights, all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Thanks for listening. Be well. Peace. One quick note. You notice Arthur Donovan referee picking up a towel that was tossed in the ring by Max Millard, who was a corner man of Max Schmeling, and he throws out the towel because Roosevelt told him, you do not count that man out until you count to 12. You don't stop the damn fight because we can have a war. No other fight since then has been that way. Peace. I was born by the river In a little tent Oh, and just like the river I've been running Ever since It's been a long A long time coming But I know A change gonna come it's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die. I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know. Change the whole car.